for your own side so that your opponent doesn't get things kicked off too far. And we're going to start off with the Fiends with the Raver. Unfortunately, Nicholas did not get to go first. Missed up on the dice roll there, but looks like Javier is taking full advantage there, getting his Fiend Smith tracked out there. And that's a gorgeous quarter century secret rare, I think I say. Yeah, it's definitely very nice. Now, you might have noticed that the field looks a little bit different. Notice that I believe Javier is a left handed oh, player, so his a graveyard and his extra monster, extra deck is going to be switched over. So, you know, just to clarify for the viewers there. And. Specifically for the viewers, you can always ask your judge for a left-hand accommodation. We are not here to make you use the wrong sides. Oh, all right. Deck has been cut. We got uh, hit by an Ash point. Blossom. Oh, was, a, was that a past turn? I'm going to activate Bonfire in response. Wow. Oh, wow. So we mentioned that there was a hand disruption on uh, Javier's side. Now here we are seeing that there's maybe too many Would copies to get the game going after being disrupted response? once. Just a little bit here, but that might mean that he has cards he can use against Nicholas as he gets his Rescue Ace combo started. We're going to start with the Bonfire, adding in the original Simple Spoil Snake Eye. I'll add original Simple Spoils to my hand. Right now, the deck isn't completely telegraphed. We went into Bonfire into Poplar. It doesn't exactly tell you everything because, you know, anyone could have been playing Poplar, for all we know. It be any deck. But I'll make Relinquish Anima effect a popular the Relinquish stuff. Anima has been summoned onto the field. We're just maximizing the amount of resources we can oh, use and minimizing okay. our costs here. Absolutely. Now, you don't I have to necessarily get rid of that monster. You can get rid of a spell the by the name of Snake Eye Poplar. It's going to go to the grave there, right. and a level one fire is about to appear. This is where a little surprise might appear on Javier's face if he lets this resolve. I mean... Are you going to let the original simple? No, no. We are not going to let the original <laughs> One simple. great Ash Blossom and Joyous Spring begets another. Oh, Cat's out of the bag now. We get the awesome. Rescue Ace Hydrant, and without the Ash Blossom, this is going to be quite the start for Nicholas. But this is not everything. There are a lot more cards to be played in Javier's hand. Now, going for the Preventer means that we may not be seeing an emergency just yet, but there's plenty of interesting combo lines. Let's go ahead and send those cards to the graveyard for a Link Summon using two effect monsters. Are we going for SP Little Knight, or are we going to go for Moon of the Closed Heaven? It seems like we're going to open up the Beansmith lines now. Going to the Requiem. Requiem? Effect? The quick effect of the Requiem. We're going to tribute it, and we're going to summon up Beansmith Engraver on Nicholas's side. Summon out Engraver. So one of the things nice about Beansmith that we've I'll witnessed the effect, you know, um, this weekend is that you can insulate your play. You can take a bit of disruption, but you can still make a little bit of follow up by just putting him. these cards into the graveyard. It's like a little backup hand if you kind of want to think about it that way. You know, just Definitely. a little bit of extra extra cards to play with. Definitely makes the decks a lot more durable when you have two different game plans that you can execute out of sequence, right? You can decide, I'm going to play a few Fiendsmith cards, wait, now I'm going to play a few Rescue Ace cards. Going back and forth allows your opponent to kind of get caught up in that chaff, right? They have to decide, oh no, I've got two really powerful decks I'm facing against one opponent. What do I stop? Now, we've now right. reached the point where we've hit Beansmith's oh, sequence, and that's going to summon out Lockerma, performing the fusion. He's going to have to put back two light bean um, monsters. Lockerma effect, effect is going to target engraver. the engraver, it. and it's going to summon the engraver. Summon. That when you have, uh, you know, four links worth of material, instead of linking, we're instead just going to summon out the interest. Interest. I'll use the right, this is There's so many yeah, different box. pivots you can go for in that right. exact point. You have two sixes, and you have four link materials for it. So we're going to put the... Oh, wow, this is going to be the turbulence we're going to put into the graveyard. And since you now have three links of material, you can quite easily just summon back the turbulence to go into Promethean, Promethean Princess, Princess as we're seeing here. Promethean Princess Bestower of Flames signature card this year, allowing for so many great fire decks yeah, to just be pushed to the forefront of the tournament scene. Around. But being able to combine it with Beatrice, Lady of the Eternal, and just send Turbulence to the graveyard and get it out is pretty crazy. So Lacrimoth's effect is going to activate from what I'm hearing here. And that's going to put back the Fiend Smith Engraver into the deck and deal uh, 1,200 damage. All right, it'll take 12 going down to 16. Yep. Great way to start the duel. Just take a little bit off the top there so it's easier to get game. I think that's actually a wonderful thing to do, um, especially when you have the ability to go into battle phase. Your reach doesn't need to go as far. Anything on the summon of Rescue Ace Turbulence? And we get the summon of Rescue Ace Turbulence through the Promethean Princess. That's 26 and 3,000. 
I mean, just one little monster, and I think that's gonna be it. I mean, we have the Preventer in hand already. This is a very dangerous position for Javier to be in. Okay, we're gonna save. Wow, we that are going was to the next game. That was enough for Nicholas. Let's yeah, see if Javier is gonna be able to make that comeback. I'll just get the 2 0 right after. It would be nice and clean. Starting off with Beans with Track. Track is going to be adding to hand a Light Beam monster. That light bean monster is going to tell exactly what's going on here. We're going to go for the Fabled Lurie, or rather, Fabled Lurie, not the Fabled Lurie. The Fabled are different monsters altogether. And that's going to be discarded and summoned onto the field right away. That's mandatory. Certainly helps to have such a fine fiend there, and it gets this combo started off quite well. Again, we're going to be seeing the Fiendsmith Requiem there. Fiendsmith Requiem is going to go ahead and bring us to our next card here, Fiendsmith Engraver. Engraver has a touchdown onto the field in defense mode. A solid opening line. Taking just a moment to consider what's next. Javier obviously on the ropes having lost the first duel. And we're going to start now into Wanted. Secret of Sinful Spoils. That's going to add the Abel start the Black Witch. Things going a lot smoother for Javier for certain here, and seems like no points of interaction, at least not yet, from Nicholas. We are not met with a drone lockboard, which is really, really good news when it comes to starting off your play these days. Drone lockboard becoming so much more powerful these days, especially when you have multiple engines that require searching to kick things off. If it was just pure snake eye, playing around droll isn't too, too difficult, yep. but when you have to start with the Fiendsman engine, you could also lock yourself out before you even get a chance to play. And that would be difficult to get through, but luckily it looks like we are getting the full complement here as we set the original Sinful Spoils off of that Diabell Star of the Black Witch. Everything's kind of turning up Javier's way, at least for this first turn of game two. Nicholas looking very, very calm. Just going to take the moment to hopefully enjoy the ride for now to see where things are going to end up and eventually tackle what is at hand, what is the giant wall, what are the, the titans that are going to be put onto the field. At least considering those Titans pretty carefully there, again, we are in round 10. The pressure is on. Definitely. Pressure is certainly on. So we're going to use the original Sinful Spell. We're going to send away the Diabell Star as the cost, summoning out Snake Eye Ash. Snake Eye Ash. Effect is going off, though. That's why we're searching back into the deck. Searching for the Poplar, Snake Eyes Poplar, into hand. Poplar effect is going to activate. It's going to summon out from hand. It's going to also activate on summon. That's going to search for a Snake Eye spell card. While seeing originals already in the graveyard, it's going to be the field spell, Divine Temple of the Snake Eyes. Definitely a great choice and great card. Activating now and going back into the deck to play something in the spell and trap zone. Snake Eyes, Diabell Star. We've got both versions of that card on the field now, or rather, they were both on the field. With our two powers combined, and again, we've talked about how much Snake Eyes Diabell Star really in just one card changed how this deck's game plan goes and all the flexibility from having a level eight monster on call here. We're not seeing as many level eight plays as we used to, but it is still powerful and has a great spot removal effect. Yeah, I mean, if you want an effect that's very similar to like Flamberge, this one just requires you kind of go into battle phase to do it. But what's really magnificent about Snake Eyes Diabell Star is that if it's in the spell and trap zone, it's one of the active plays that gives you a summon now. Although you play the risk of maybe drawing it may not feel so good because it's pretty difficult to put back onto the field once it's in your hand. Yeah, but that's the risk of a good card. Sometimes it may show up at the wrong time, but that wouldn't prevent a great player like Javier from using it. Now we're going to go into Snake Eye Oak from the Snake Eye Ash effect. Oak effect, summon back the Ash, and we have four monsters on the field ready to go. Well, Javier's built up a pretty big board here, but what shall he bring out next? And we are taking two monsters, a Poplar and the Oak, and we're looking into the main deck, so we're using the effect of Oak. This is how you tell which effect they're using, and that's going to be Snake Eyes, Flamberge Dragon. Yep, that's fine. We've got our second level eight. 
And the Poplar is going to activate and it's going to put back the Snake Eyes Diabell Star into the spell and trap zone as a continuous spell. Could imagine that we're going for the Hope Harbinger Dragon line, so I think we'll likely just see some Link Summons. Yeah, I think the extra deck being so tight with the Fiendsmith added in, we got like five, six additional cards added in. Sometimes you just have to make the cut, and Hope Harbinger perhaps is one of those cards that didn't make the cut. It's kind of like a dodgeball draft as you sleeve up those 15 extra deck cards, and well, no hard feelings, but there's just so few choices that you can make with so many great cards out there. But sometimes those cards get sidelined into the side deck. And that's been really exciting too, to see that the extra deck is so cramped now that the side deck is being used. Of course, we could always do it, but we don't see it in very many formats. Speaking of extra deck, looks like we're gonna see Fiendsmith sequence here, likely bringing out a fusion summon, but the great news is Javier's in the driver's seat. You can continue these plays in whatever direction you want. Yes, sequence effect has now been activated. Remember, it's not an on summon effect. It is an effect that does require activation by ignition. Gives you a lot of flexibility there because again, since it isn't an on summon effect, you can just see, well, maybe I'll do this, and, and now my opponent knows Sequence is coming. That's a painful choice to make. It seems like Javier did side in the Desiree. So speaking of sidelined monsters, that monster was sidelined, and now it's uh, put into the front line. Hey, put me in, coach. And honestly, a great monster here that might be able to be used to stop Turbulence or perhaps any of the things that will get that Rescue Ace engine online. Now, you could directly equip the Fiendsmith sequence, but that would be a waste of the Link 2 it has to offer. So, this offers you additional material, and you also get to put it into the graveyard and then re-equip it. That's the, you know, the best part about these. The coffin itself, that's I mean, it's, why they're really good. It's a coffin. It doesn't mind being in the graveyard. It's going to pop right out. It's Halloween for them every day. <laughs> <laughs> And we're going to use the effect of Tract. And we are going to fuse them off. Very interesting. And that's going to go into Fiendsmith's Lacrima, Lacrima effect. We're going to summon. I haven't seen someone do this all weekend. <laughs> First time. Oh, Nicholas needing to confirm the effect of sure. Lacrima. Yeah, what works. does it summon? Well, it summons out Light Fiends. Mm -hmm. Or adds Light Fiends to hand. That's why you can summon back the Desiree. The Desiree was properly Fusion 7, so it is back on the field in a flash. That was an interesting line. Rather than using it as Link material and just putting it to Graveyard, and now we're linking these off instead. Okay. Shows you the creativity of this deck. You really can choose different directions. While the cards may seem familiar from Duelist to Duelist, it's just like a boxing match. They come in with the same tools, but how they oh. use them, that's what makes them who they are. This makes a lot more sense now because you can't make IP Mascarena with a Link monster. Mm -hmm. Therefore, he circled around it to get those monsters into non-Link forms and then re link them into the IP Mascarena. This is a wonderful way to kind of get through because we want that IP Mascarena in the graveyard to put it back in the spawn trap zone just so that we have an additional disruption against the opponent on their turn. Yep. So now we're going to go into Promethean Princess. Promethean Princess is going to activate a non-target special summon from the graveyard that's going to be... Thank you guys Flying Bird Dragon. I like that line. It's really good stuff there, and we've seen also Desiree's interaction with the Promethean Princess. I'm not sure if it'll come up here, but all these cards have worked in so many different ways over the course of the weekend, so Nicholas is no slouch for just seeing an even newer combo being used with the same cards. But Javier moves on, considering whether or not he is going to access even more resources there. Again, a great field, but an even greater one could be made with some cards from the extra deck. He's taking some time to think about which card he wants to probably use for that Flamber Dragon. And Flamber Dragon likely is just going to put the IP Mask Ring. It's likely the best choice in this current situation. Letting you access the extra deck on the fly. Yeah. IP Mask Arena gets a lot of work done this format. Now, we are currently under a Fire Lock, but that could just mean one Desiree away from not getting locked out after all. But we're going to see if that's going to matter because we still have Oak on the field. We can still go into Fire Monsters. That's fine. What fire lock? What fire lock? <laughs> and yep, we are getting rid of our own fire lock. <laughs> that is so cool. That is one of the coolest plays, I think. I think I probably like the link on the Go ahead, negate your own card. <laughs> well, once you can negate your own negative effects, I mean, that's how you really benefit. And this is going to allow you just link four right away. We can go into anything now. And that's going to be Appaloosa. Yep. 
Chimichurro Appaloosa has been very popular this weekend. Again, just being able to get out those two quick negation effects and then maybe linking it off with the IP Mascarina. We've seen so many yep. different variations on that for so many cool yep. Link monsters. Yeah. But looks like Javier might be wrapping up here and passing things back on to Nicholas. All right, with Wanted as more or less the final touch here. I want to draw yep. that one card from the Wanted Graveguard effect, putting back the original Sinful Spoil Snake Eye. So there's a few options in hand. Ooh, even Ooh. another two cards set onto the field. That's going to be a lot for Nicholas to play through. Okay. Could be some surprises. Let's see how okay. Nicholas does. Okay, my man. And we are not activating stuff on the uh, fly bonfire. here. We're going to start with Bonfire. Um, sure. Okay. Bonfire's good. The way I like to kind of describe the Snake Eye Beansmith, a Beansmith Snake Eye deck, it's a tree. It's a tree, and, and you mash two trees hand. together, and that's the kind of lines it. you're getting. You got your oak, your oh, ash, you got all sorts of trees in there. And it's just so wild of how many different interaction lines. It's just how the, the two decks will intersect with each other. That's what I like to kind of compare Apple? it to. No, it's really neat. It's really neat. I can almost see it in my head, almost like two flow charts at the same time. But you're just like, I'm well, I'm here. Let me just flip the flow chart over, and now I'm over here. Let's go a different direction. Exactly. Okay, we've gotten to our Hydrant Summon now. Immediately using IP Mask Arena there. Seems like we might have something we can respond with, but... Nicholas Uncertain there. Allowing it to resolve, we're going to go ahead and Link Summon, combining IP Mask Arena and the Snake Eye monster there, the Flamberge, and let's see what we get out next. Okay, we're in a tight spot. We're going to go into SP Little Knight. Ooh, that's going to be difficult if it gets rid of the Hydra before it can even do anything. Now, is there going to be a response? Um, Chain Link 3, Alert to Search, because I can control Hydra on the board. Chain Link 3, they're going to go with Alert while the Hydra's on the field. You get to add a Rescue Ace monster from the deck to the hand, because Hydra's on the field. Knowing that the Hydra's going to go away, you know, it's really well planned here. Now, a Banish Hydrant isn't the end-all be-all because we do have Preventer as an option that does bring yeah, back the I'm Hydrant back onto the field. So we're going to go ahead and grab Rescue Ace Impulse from the deck to the hand there, and you're absolutely right that Rescue Ace Hydrant could come back from the Preventer effect. But we do have to get that far, so Nicholas still has a little bit of work left to do. Now the top part of the banish belongs to Javier, and uh, the bottom Javier part of the banish belongs to Nicholas. Just to get the viewers at home yep. a little bit more comfortable with what they're seeing on the field here, <laughs> or else that it, is looks true. Like, it looks like they could be sharing the pile there. So the players have to be very careful not to mix things up here. Oh, we've talked about our turn. How about our banishment? But the good news is the cards are very delineated there. So from the Flamberge effect, we got back the poplar and the oak. We're going to be grabbing the original Central Spoil Snake Eye as part of that chain link. So we've dealt with the S one SP interaction. SP does have two interactions after all. There's still an Appaloosa. I'm gonna activate emergency. It summons a rescue ace from the deck and I could be one from Canada. And field. now there is emergency yeah. being activated. Now that's gonna summon out a rescue ace, but it does require you to tribute away a rescue ace, but that's gonna be Ash. met with Ooh. Ash Blossom Joy Spring. That is rough. It could have been used to use Preventer to maybe get back I'll that rescue ace hydrant. And, well, just because you burned away your Ash Blossom, now we get to go into Fiendsmith. You know, we're going to keep on going. Hey, ooh, oh, wow. wow. What a great card put in. That's going to be Crossout Designate, Crossout Designate. Closes out the... All right, um, stand by main. I'm going to activate Bonfire. All right, everything on the line, the all-important game three. We're going to start with Nicholas. Nicholas starting off his play with the bonfire, bonfire into Poplar. Effect on summon, they go search. Effect on summon, getting that search. Is this a very important interaction point to prevent the original Sinful Spoil Snake? You know that there's not going to be a field spell. You know that they have a conflicting field spell. We've got an HQ that we have to worry not being on fire. So we're going to go for the original Sinful Spoil Snake Eye. That's going to lead to the summon of Hydrant, if that's possible. But first, we've got to maximize our resources, going to relinquish Anima, putting the Poplar back, so that, you know, we can send away some other card and keeping a monster on the field. 
Very similar start for Nicholas once he got his engine online oh, awesome. last time. But it seems like no points of interaction here. Taking a quick look at the hand, maybe Javier's going to do something, but no, it's good. Hey, we can be very patient with the disruption from hand. Sometimes you get those amazing blow, but you need it in combination. And that's where you can get those really, really big plays. Now we get into the Rescue Ace uh, Hydrant. I'm rescue hydrant. I'm gonna the effect, uh, and we get the Fire Engine. You know, this time the keys did it manage to start, you this know. Whenever I summon a Rescue Ace, I can summon it from my hand. Okay. And then while it's on board, if you special summon a monster... So I while that Rescue Ace monster is on the field, the Hydrant cannot be targeted. Yep, that's all he does. Yep. Certainly helps protect um, it, and you know, you might get a few extra monsters from engine to boot, but right now we are just booting up awesome. the fire engine online here. Grabbing somebody else, let's see what we grab from the hydrant. I'm gonna add airlifter to my hand. We're gonna add airlifter. Ooh, and there's that air rescue now. We've got mm -hmm. the fire engine, we've got the, you know, the aerial support. Look to the skies, uh, airlifter is here. That is gonna go for alert. Alert's gonna grab into turbulence. Anywhere I think we're a link summon away from having the materials in the graveyard for turbulence. This link summon here could go in either direction. SP to protect turbulence, but we're gonna go, of course, into Fiendsmith line because the Fiendsmith line insulates your play even further, and you can still make an SP little knight if needed later on. Definitely the sky is the limit here, taking a pause from the Rescue Ace engine to use Fiendsmith Requiem to go ahead and bring out that Fiendsmith engraver. And you're absolutely right, Tom. It just has this nice little pause in the flow chart to be like, now I'm going to switch to this deck. No, nah, I think I'll play these cards. Mm-hmm. Vean Smith's Sequence. What an appropriate name. I'm going to sequence my play a little bit differently. Now, no disruption at this point. Vean Smith's Sequence is, is going to successfully resolve. We're going to put back two monsters going into Vean Smith's Lacrima. Lacrima effect target. Lacrima effect target. The Vean Smith Engraver. Add back to hand. Send back to grave. We're going to get tracked into hand. Activate the trap. Add Lori, fix Lori. Lori effect. Add Lori and discard Lori. Lori affecting the grave. Summon out Lori. Just a flurry of cards as Lori hits the field again. Uninterrupted play here from Nicholas as he's able to get the entire Fiendsmith combo without a hitch. And still holding on to that turbulence, so we might be seeing something pretty crazy. And there's the SP Little Knight. We just make it I a little later while SP maintaining SP monsters. And that's going to banish I mean, his own card, his own airlifter. I'm going to shuffle back. Lurie, summon. We're gonna Interesting. shuffle back the lure to summon back the engraver from the graveyard. You know, welcome back. Engraver comes with a shovel, okay. digging himself out. Overlay. I'm gonna make DDD. DDD oh, wave wow. high king Caesar. So this is gonna prevent Nibiru the from uh, uh, dealing some massive off. damage. And even with the SP on the field, on now the we can also dodge in infinite field? impermanence. We're just layering ourselves from the disruptions that could come uh, okay. from Javier. Four. So there's just no way out, it seems. Again, without being able to use Nibiru to clear that field, Turbulence may well set four cards. Well, maybe we were waiting for a combination, but the combination is looking very, very tight. I think there's still an opportunity, you know, if you get the chain links done correctly, it's possible. So we're gonna start off with the infinite impermanence. Now, Turbulence is a little bit slower in comparison. So we're gonna turn off the ability to, to stop the Nibiru. See, layering like this, now there's a chance that Nibiru could come down at this point, and there it oh, is, wow. the giant rock. See, you just have to time it properly. This this isn't like the chain one, two. This is called turn off the thing that will stop me, and then I'll have the better timing to drop the Nibiru at this particular point. I mean, there is still an SP little light, so not everything is going to be lost. SP, you know, you know, smoke bombing in, grabbing one of the monsters and tagging them back out. <laughs> Note, great sequencing there again, use of the open game state to go ahead and negate the effect of the one card that could have stopped Nibiru and then dropping that primal being onto the field. Unless... Um, I'm gonna chain SP again. There we go. SP Little Knight. SP Little Knight, secretly a rescue ace monster, rescuing oh, one of their own monsters. Is that okay? Awesome. And Turbulence will be put into the graveyard. Uh, give a spot you want the token in, my man. That's a very large token. It certainly is. There, three thousand plus the twenty-six hundred from the Wave King High Caesar is to go. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Now, will Nicholas be able to continue? Lacrima effect. That's going to deal a little bit of effect damage. That's going to be twelve hundred. Okay. Well, you got to get the damage, but you still take the damage. <laughs> Well, certainly important as this is the last game where anyone will have life points. Again, this is game three here on a very crucial round 10. Both players still in contention. It'll be a little easier to advance through the tournament with a win in this round.
Oh, there's a continuation. Triple tactics oh, talent. Wow. Well, you're throwing a rock at me while well, I'm going fanning at you. Ooh, oh no, there's two starters in this particular hand. Depends on what you have in your hand as Nicholas, but looks like possibly Dia Bellstar might be the choice. Maybe he's more worried about both the effect and the body. Whereas with Snake Eye Ash, he can stop the okay. effect and not worry about the body. We are clearing away the, the free special summon. Oh, careful there. Oh. You know, when you shuffle your cards, you have to be, be careful. Very careful. A little bit of information there. Okay, so we've gotten rid of the you know, Dia Bell Star, the Black Witch, knowing that there's one card that is almost unplayable in the hand, which is the Flambridge. I mean, you can still what? tribute some of it, but this is going to be a very difficult time because the Witch is crazy because you can send away the Flambridge. Now you took away that option. We got the SP Little Knight coming yep. back yep. onto the yep. field. Uh, sure. This is going to be yeah, yeah. a very tight position. Now, note that there is still a fire engine on the field. If your opponent does summon it's yeah. summon or special summon a monster, you're going to be able to There's summon there. out a level 4 I, Lord I Rescue Ace Monster you. onto your field from the deck. Which is crazy because it can give you warlord. another way to build up a second turn right later. There. And with SP Little Knight, you yep. might be able to disrupt your opponent, who doesn't Drop. really yep. have yep. that many cards. But as we know, Fiend Smith Snake Eye doesn't need that many cards in order to get started. But based on the hand we saw so far, it all comes down to this. I think Nicholas still is in a pretty decent position with a giant Nibiru token. It's the fire engine that's really putting on the pressure. Because there are really good low-level rescue ace monsters. We've seen the airlifter that has, I guess, already been played. But it's the other one that we saw previously, the impulse. Very scary monster. Because it can fetch into any of your machines, rescue ace. And those are usually the big ones. Now, Preventure may be able to bring back that airlifter for an additional search. So Nicholas has done a great job of, with the limited resources that he was left, setting up for future turns. Seems like we're in... Are we entering the battle phase? Seems like the rock is going to attempt to attack oh, the... Dear. Let's see if which one we're going to be going attacking here. Because, it, yeah, we're going to take away the fire engine, the one that brings the backup. So we're basically blocking that off. But that means Nicholas will survive another turn. Now we're going to normal summon up the Snake Eye Ash. The effect of Ash is going to go through, and there's no response from Nicholas. It could be an open season now. It really could. It might just be up to SP a little night to protect Nicholas's precious life points here, because with Poplar about to hit the field, this could be a very difficult situation very fast. Let's see where this board gets developed into. Now, since uh, the, the key monster has been taken away, because if we accidentally played into that fire engine, I I'm think the worry was probably the preventer just flipping the monster phase down and just ending the turn altogether. So, you know, really well played by Javier. Uh, no. I'm going to then chain roll. Ooh, Ooh. Joel and Logbert coming down. Now, this is only a snake eye play. So it's not the end okay. of the world um, because snake eyes haven't been known to be able to pivot around, okay. uh, you know, being locked Drill under Joel Lockbird. And we're gonna use the effect of, wow. oh wow. This is a, a fantastic way to kind of clear off the one monster that could just jump out and just generate a giant field. And now that the poplar has been summoned, it cannot add an additional card because we're under Joel Lockbird. We're gonna be linking away that poplar. Poplar can't get rid of that Nibiru token by just pointing into it. It seems like we're going to be going to relinquish Anima to kind of just, you know, soak up that token. Certainly a back and forth duel here, a simplified game state as it were. Looks like we might be going to an SP Little Knight. Feels like a strong combo indeed, but yeah. trying to make sure we can do what we can do. We're going to yeah. absorb that token first. Yeah, if you go straight into SP Lena, what if SP Lena kind of gets negated? I'm mean, you get the double chain, but you kind of just lose the additional interaction later on if you do need it. Yep. So now we're going to oh, moon up the closed, closed heaven. heaven. So that's a much safer way to get in now, but we are still locked under. But that's going to go into Fiend yep. Smith's Requiem. Requiem effect. Special summon out Fiend Smith's Engraver. And the good news is that Fiendsmith has plenty of ways not to be adding cards from the deck to the hand, so Troll and Lockbird may not feel as bad as expected. I mean, you can still perform like fusion summons with sequence, you can go into Lacrima, Lacrima generating more cards just from the graveyard, but you just have to have the correct number of Light Fiends to manipulate that as your resource in the graveyard. Well, we certainly see plenty of Light Fiends now. I believe Requiem, Moon of the Closed Heaven, and now the Fiendsmith Engraver, if somehow it gets to the grave. I mean, very well played by both of these players. 
Nobody is giving an inch, despite all the cards they've used up against each other. Um, okay. Think before SP returns, that's okay. Oh, we're going to... End phase? End phase, SP returns back onto the field. All right. Spoke too soon then. Looks like Nicholas is going to get another chance oh, no. here. Again, the battle oh, phase already used up. The draw was a reinforce. Ooh. Um, original simple spoils. But oh, original simple spoils, Nick, in back the back graveyard. Back. Okay. Looks like it's good. I'm We're going to add a fire monster to hand. Let's put back the poplar. I mean, that's a great way to use that card. Certainly sure. Normal summon out the hydrant. Activate the effect of hydrant. And that's going to be okay. Oh, wow. In my hand. That's going to get Preventer. Oh, this is a very dangerous position. Remember earlier, I believe the Airlifter was banished? Yes, and so <laughs> if we lose this Preventer, Airlifter will come back. And while it may be at one, that one gets a lot of work done. I like how you phrased it. Banishing Turbulence to summon. Banishing and Turbulence. Oh, we're going for the I'm Turbulence. The the Preventer has been summoned onto the field, and we also get the Fiendsmith. Engraver being summoned back into onto the field. Yeah, that's going to be... Oh, we're doing this quite quickly here. That's going to go into the Requiem. Summon Requiem summons back Engraver. another copy of Fiends with Engraver. Engraver. And now we've got Equip. a lot of light monsters in the graveyard ready to go. That's going to do the Equip. Uh, effective Engraver to send and send. Equip to send away. So we're using the Effective Engraver to send away the Requiem and the opposing Engraver. It's such a good card. Going first or second, you get to clear monsters, develop a field. Absolutely. Nicholas I'm going to stroll on the beach. <laughs> Nicholas calculating damage there. We might be having a battle phase quite Probably soon. Right. Discarding the reinforced to be able to use its effect later if it even comes up because Dia Bellstar is going to go ahead and add another card, setting it to the field. He wanted Seeker of Sinful Spoils. So many resources there, but now it's just time for the battle phase. This is a lot of damage. He's got it. Nicholas. 